Hey, it's Schmitty with another podcast, Talking Schmidt, the one that uh, I do, actually. That's that's what we're here for. Today on the program, we have the great San Diegan, Shuriken Shannon. Haven't talked to him in many, many years. It's been a while. So I'm looking forward to catching up with old Shuriken. As always, we do have a podcast that you can listen to anywhere that you get your podcast spotify anchor apple etc and we're also on youtube so if you want to tap in and look at some visuals you can do that as well we're at youtube.com talking schmidt please subscribe and please spread the word we're here for you and we're free monday through sunday is the new tuesday i never know when these are coming out i just do them and put them out now Hope you enjoy the the rave reviews are in. Keith Meek was fucking epic. Aaron Meza, Jesus Christ. People are loving the uh, 2024 guests. McKenney's out there tapping in. He said 23, not that great. 24 is going to be epic. So we're fucking hyped. And uh, every week so far, I think I've mentioned this, but I got to go get lunch and hear the story from Alyssa about her Thrasher cover and big props on that uh, Death Wish. Baker has a new Death Wish video was tight. A lot of good skating and the homies came through. Ooh, yes, we are. Blood Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Also, special shout out to Robin and Steven in Newburgh, North Carolina for winning that peace stone board from Billy at Backdoor. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't think so. Winner, winner, sheen dinner. Other than that, Here's my guest. All right. This is Shrek and Shannon, and you're tuning in to Talking Schmidt. And let's get talking. A little bit of intro. Talking Schmidt. I'm already not watching. It's cool. Like, tonight is the night. When you bring it, you got to sing it. I wouldn't say it was fun. What do you mean? Bo Christian Fletcher's younger brother. Oh, the dog is. Oh, big dog's in. What do you think, Dolan? Beyond Schmidt, you want to break in, you got to get broke in. And it's good to hear all this love. Talking Schmidt, right? It's skateboarding. I remember that. Who sent you? Dude, we need a magazine. Black skateboarding history is very important. Yes. This is the moment. Holy shit. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yay! I agree. <laughs> Wi-Fi check one. Wi-Fi check two. All right, everybody. We're back with another episode. And today we got a real good one. I haven't talked to this dude in a while. So I'm super hyped to, um, you know, also catch up, but also educate y'all on who he is. And this is the one, the only. This is Shariq and Shannon. <laughs> How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, everything's well, you know, living and keep it moving and pushing. Where are we at? OB, MB, D- uh, SD MB. proper? <laughs> all, all regional SD <laughs> and shit. Uh, yeah, I'm down in La Mesa, though. I'm down East County right now and shit. So oh, okay. Ish, but yeah. yeah, La Mesa, I've been over here for a while and shit. So, you know, holding it down, staying grounded, more or less. Okay. Fuck yeah. Um, tell me about the name Shuriken. I think I know a little bit like your dad, your dad was into martial arts, right? And, and Shuriken, was it mean? Yeah, yeah. My dad was uh, super in uh, martial arts and uh, he was a teacher for shit, a good like 40 something years um, on the school in downtown San Diego for forever. And then uh, I think that's where my name kind of sparked. It's a uh, uh, it's Japanese and it means uh, ninja star. So it's like one of the throwing stars and shit, you know. Bah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to fuck with those as kids. They're so sick. The metal ones, you just sing and get them to yep. stick in the walls. Oh, yeah. Always so fun and shit. So, yeah, that's where uh, my name or, uh, originated from. And, uh, yeah, just embraced it ever since, you know. Okay, so I got a little story for you. I I, yeah. I, I hit up Chet Childress, and I was like, Chet, I'm going to interview Shuriken. Um, what do you got? Like, you, you got something cool? 
and he was like, dude, I don't know, man. It's just a good skate shop. Like, I was like, no, dude, not shrunken head, Sharika Shannon. <laughs> Mar on the Vaughn, living on the run, sucker. That's so good. You're like, what? Well, you don't know me? You don't remember me, bro? I thought, I think we used to ride for the same team, I think. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's fucking a comedy. That's so comedy. Yeah, they get the mix ups and shit. You know, shrunken hair. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but what are some of your nicknames that you've had through the years? Oh shit, dude, we'll run those. Let's see, shit can. Uh, let's see, <laughs> fucking skid mark. I don't know. Some my fools are fucking mean and shit. <laughs> uh, sure, I can. Uh, or uh, what was it? Oh, Dukin. Yeah, the fucking Street Fighter move. Mother these heads, but you know, <laughs> all, all in good fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude. Like, seriously, gr growing up, people ain't trying to be your friends. They're, they're, they're oh. picking on you. Yeah. We've all had the fucking names. Yeah. Especially mine. I'm like, dude, like, dude, I'm, yeah, you can butcher mine fucking 10 different ways. And, you know, kids will find the most random shit to pull out their ass and shit. And I'm like, man, all right. Well, I guess I got to take it. <laughs> yeah, once I became Schmitty, that was my nickname. Uh, shitty was very easy for people to say. Like, it was like, ah, oh, right. shitty's here. Shitty, shitty, shitty. Right. I saw Jamie still runs it. I'm just like, dude, come on. It's 2024. Let's get, <laughs> let's get creative here. <laughs> we passed that now. I know, right? We got to create more and shit. I get that distraction over there. <laughs> it's Schmitty. Well, it's Schmitty. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah, uh, I get it straight. Were you did were you born and raised in there, San Diego area? Yeah, yeah, born and raised in San Diego. Just kind of all over, bounced around a lot when I was a kid. Just kind of up and down along San Diego, but yeah, SD, SD. Who were the early like inspos? Were you like a big Donger fan, or like who? Oh, yeah. Who fired uh, you up down there? Donger was always dope. Uh, Rodney Jones, he was he was living out here at that at that time and shit. Yeah, so yeah. he was heavy with the, the crew I was I was kicking it and skating with at that time. Uh Neil Headings, obviously. Um Sam Hits. Man, yeah, there's a lot of random heads too, for sure. All the good local heads too in OB, because I pretty much skated in Ocean Beach a lot. Right. Uh, so everybody was kind of just there or OB Park or the streets or mm. you know that so yeah locally yeah those dudes would be the heads um yeah growing up a little little later too like you know the kalen and you know heads like that though for sure but yeah yeah you know. eventually probably the mafia dudes they hold it down tough yeah for sure yeah skate with them heavy back in the day and shit dude sessions those uh skate mafia saturdays were cracking off like nobody's uh, this and shit <laughs> you done the run right Oh yeah, many times. So that was that's the classic and shit. It's yeah. still there. It's still kicking. Concourse is still cracking too. So you know, it's been like fought to past oh. over twenty years. You know, to, that's you know, amazing. So you know, it's probably been you know more than that. So I know. I want to see know. like seventies videos of the old timers on the plastic boards doing the run, like you know, like yeah, <laughs> right. Like yo, like, this is what you still used to be, and then to making it down that whip, you know, right at the end of it, you know. It, you have to really be really be on your toes and shit and then like dude i seen some some heavy Wipe crap out, huh? balls. i know yeah there's it gets going because it's like a smooth ride and then it shoots you out like nobody's business and you're like oh shit if you're not ready for it then you might you might run into that wall or, or just slide out or some shit <laughs> but yeah that's that's the spot that's a classic sd sunday spot <laughs> what, what do you remember i know it's like <laughs> The memory bank's not always the best place for us these days as we get older, but uh, right. what do you remember that kind of sparked it for you? Like, I remember for us, for some reason, I have no idea, like if it was a video or a magazine or whatever, but we did what was called catamaraming, which was like two dudes putting their legs in their lock. So one dude, you're basically sitting down facing each other. I think most people maybe know or they don't know. I don't know. But we had this little hill and we would go down together and turn and in the hallway there was super like smooth and right. that's kind of where we learned like for me i just felt like going as fast as i possibly could and keeping control was right. so like getting to that one level where you're like if i go faster i'm fucked. but like yeah. 
but knowing where that was like for us right. that's what it was about like going fast and then doing power slides or whatever learning that tommy Guerrero, i always say huge influence right. watching him skate the hills but like for you what was it that took it to the next level where you're like okay i got a skateboard this is cool and then all of a sudden you're like no no this is for life like this right. is my shit. <laughs> yeah i know huh that, that's always a uh a thought of like the turning point of like all right i'm 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 in for life type of shit. yeah uh, i feel like it, it honestly stemmed a long time ago when i was really young i always had a board around like i've always had uh just something to ride around in if it, if it was on my knees or it was just uh on my butt and just trying to just scoot down the road and shit. but uh i think probably about fuck, probably about like nine or ten i think i was like all right like I, i'm 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 doing this you know and i don't think anything's gonna take me away from this you know and it, it, it just kind of kept riding after that so i think uh somewhere in downtown san diego that's where i was still at uh uh and uh i've always had a board around that's all i always remember and stuff like that so i feel like it's <laughs> always been stuck to my hip <laughs> ever since and shit um but yeah turning it up like i was like you know getting the groove of everything probably yeah definitely around 12 ish and like 11 12 i was like all right dude like I'm, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like I could I could get good at something. And mm. I wasn't doing any other activities and shit, you know. It was like you know baseball and stuff like that, but uh, it, yeah, there was nothing that was going to take me away from that skateboard, though. <laughs> Do you think that like when you learned how to ollie, um, you got good pop and stuff? Like, was that like something that was super pivotal that you're like, holy shit? Because like we always said when we look at Donger. We're like, that's all I need. If I could ollie like Donger, I'd just do that all day, right? Like, Facts. but like a lot of people have said kind of when they learned the first kickflip, it was like, once I could flip the board, I was like, oh, this opened up so much in my mind. But right. it all stems from the ollie. I, I wonder like what you remember as being like more like I went home and celebrated. I got my first like up a ledge or like I did a kickflip off of curb cut or like what right. it was yeah i think it was uh just kind of ollieing up curbs i think i think that was like oh i could kind of like you know you know slide my foot i could do little ollies but it was like i couldn't really have the motion to ollie up the curb so i would like dedicate myself because it would be like me and my moms uh and we'd walk she'd walk and then i'd ride my board but every time she'd walk somewhere i'm like i'm determined to get up these damn curves uh and i was not getting up those curves at like at, you know anytime soon but the progression of it was like yo now i'm all up every consecutive curb on my way to the store or whatever i'm like yo now i think i'm i'm getting the groove of it or the momentum of everything and stuff like that so for the ollie for sure of like getting up things i think that's where it was it was like the ollie was you know the ollie like yeah i'm, I'm stuck you're gonna be stoked no matter what but yeah. like i think it's like getting up certain things i was like yo okay this is kind of interesting i didn't know i could do that and then uh, right the flips come and then uh i think the tray flip was the the 360 foot was definitely like i think the pivotal moment for me of like uh wanting to do so much more you know like i had the kickflip uh and it was like cool uh and then and then i busted my teeth on some fucking kickflips and i was like <laughs> <laughs> and i was over flip tricks for a, a super long time <laughs> uh, but then the tray flip came around because i was like i was so determined to get that going because it took me a while to do tray flips and uh, once I got that, I was like, I'm never going to do another trick ever <laughs> again type of vibe. But uh, I think that was like the direction of like, all right, now I'm progressing in a way that I didn't really see or even, you know, or like, but it was it was there because I, you know, he never done any of those before and stuff like that. But just the progression and repetitive and just just being consistent about it. I'm like, wow, OK, well, I didn't know I could have a mindset like this. And then mm -hmm. now I'm like all right let's go and shit so yeah the trade foot was definitely i think the pivotal moment for me and then i'm i'm i'll still be doing that till i'm 75 all right <laughs> fuck yeah i mean what what do you think the key to a tray flip is like what was it that you learned that you didn't have it and then you're like ah that's that's in that now you got it right uh the whip i guess the whip of the back foot it was like 
my placement, you can place, you can place your foot anywhere on the board, really, you know, uh, but you know, for obviously you're a little kid, so you're placing your, your foot way lower than normal. And, uh, uh, I think I was always having trouble getting it all the way around and mm. it was, and it was like, how do I figure this out? Like, I got to figure little key things that I'm doing wrong. Like, uh, it's not flipping all the way or it's not. It was just not it was just not rotating all the way. It was like almost, but I wouldn't get my weight up or I wouldn't, you know, uh, I wouldn't move to the side. There was just certain things that it just wasn't working. And then uh, and it took yeah, it really did take me a long time for it. Like as a kid, I was like, yo, it months and shit. That wasn't just nothing really came easy for me. Everything I had to work my ass off for. Uh, so and then once it like and it's funny because like once I like got it, I feel like it just clicked and I'm like, I, I need to do it like this every time. And that's uh -huh. when you figure out like, oh, I need to place my foot like that, or I need to do this, or I need to, this is where it's at. And then it was like, and then it just kept working. I'm like, oh damn, I'm, I'm doing them now. I'm doing them. I'm doing them. And, oh, uh, and then, and it's just like, then you just never forget. It's like, it's muscle memory and just, just like, uh, and just having that, that, that pinpointing mindset of like, I'm going to get this the way I kind of like it and the way I think it's right. And then when I do it, I need to just figure out how to keep doing it like this. Okay. Uh, that's, that's what I said. I was in a garage, just uh, uh, some some homie's garage, just repeat, repeat. Me and him just going back and forth, trying to do it and shit. Yeah. And, and eventually like stuck it. I'm like, oh, and then I just never wanted to do nothing else again. <laughs> uh, and then it just kind of, kept working more and then you got, you got stronger and then you grow on, grow on taller and shit. So you mm. got more to it. And, uh, uh, and then you find new ways to, you know, to, you know, do it and shit, you know, and, and, and then you develop your own little steed to it. Who do you think out there has a, like, who's one of your favorite tray flips? Shit. That's a tough one, man. The battle begins. Oh uh, shit. Who was I always fucking stoked on? I mean, obviously, Kalis. Kalis is, you know, everybody better not ever enter a conversation without Kalis' name. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, damn, so many, man. Shit. I always, I've always, it, it, it's crazy because it was always, uh, now it would be considered fake Steve. It's so weird. We, 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 we do the little trapeze, but Carlos de Andretti, mm. uh, the Brazilian homie, he, he was, it, it was, but you couldn't fake how he did it though. That's why I was like, yo, like what? I've never seen it like that, but he used to do it at contest and street. Yeah. Dude, the best one was like mini ramps just to fakie and stuff. I'm like, yo, yeah, nobody it. doing it like that. Like at that time, nobody was doing it like that. And it's like, you're like, oh, this is different for a tray flip. I'm like, oh, I kind of want to get that front foot catch and then have that, that barely that back foot off and then kind of just click to it right at the last minute and then boom right away. Uh, so yeah, I've always, I was always kind of like, like just fascinated by his shit for sure. I'm like, I man. remember he was a contest machine. Yeah. He was something else and shit. And he was so, he was a tiny guy Little, too. Yeah. Yo, but he was the nicest dude too. I met him a few times. I got a you know chance to meet him a few times and he was, he was always super cool and shit. So fuck. Yeah. Those dudes are fucking the best. <laughs> what was like an early memory of like getting one of your first boxes delivered to your house? Like, fuck. First box I ever got was very random, very out of nowhere. Um, I didn't have much going at the time. I was just like a, a grom skating. I really, I was like bouncing through uh, households and shit and just kind of just floating and shit. And um, it was around uh skateboard heaven you remember skateboard heaven mm. uh skateboard heaven days though but they had a skate park in downtown and shit it was before the uh petco park was built the stadium was built and shit and it was with the the big dc vert ramp yeah dc vert ramp with danny way and all those heads and shit mm. but uh i was skating there one day and uh the homie ivory uh w which i used to film with all the time back then well i didn't really film much i only had like two tricks to my name basically like <laughs> I literally i was just at the skate park or just skating the street before the skate park was built so i didn't i'm like wh who's filming i don't know how to fucking film no tricks like i'm just skating and shit and i guess uh uh adrian mallory had sparked homie to like yo go film a dude like try to get something going and like that that one day i got like 
three three tricks and shit. And that was my that was my tape. That was a footy tape. You know, that was like I didn't know what the fuck that was. So I'm like, all right. Uh, a couple of days later, homie shows up to skateboard heaven. I'm skating the skate park. Rolls in with a big ass box. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, this is yours, dog. I'm like, from who? I don't. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> uh, and it happened to be um, uh, Pig Wood at the time. They were starting Pig Wood. Mm. Uh, so oh, okay. Josh Beagle and uh, he he had plugged in with Josh and he had shown him a couple couple clips and they were already starting a team based around a couple other heads and. It was kind of like, yeah, they just they want you on, basically. I'm like, what? Like, I, 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 okay, like, fuck, I guess, shit, fuck. Yeah. Let's go skate, I guess. <laughs> Didn't know how to really respond, but, yeah, that was, like, that was uh, the first bigger box on the, on that tip of, like, a big box. Uh, but my very first, first box, it was the local homies. It was fucking uh, uh, Frozen Jeff. Yeah, frozen? Jeff, fro- frozen skateboards. That was my first like uh, local homies that were doing it with like uh, you know his his whole thing that he was trying to do for like the local heads and shit. That was like a couple was it more- a shop? Uh, no, no, it was just like just a, a local homie that just wanted to you know make boards and do his thing, and mm. uh, he was known around town already and shit too, and. Um, uh, so he, he was cool. Fucking Jeff was the homie. He fucking kicked down. He sent me to contest and shit too. And uh, he did. He definitely did a lot. Fucking my early upbringings, and especially at the skate park, because I was always stoked. I'm like, yo, I did this trick. Yeah, Yo, you stoked on me, dog? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Little kid type shit. But uh, right. yeah, he was the he was the homie and shit. And he was definitely the first uh, few skateboards that I had to ride that kicked down and shit. And then. Uh, and I never had new boards like that at the time and shit. And then, um, damn, yeah, timelines. See, I'm trying to fit those timelines back in and shit. I was on a germ skateboard for like a blip, like oh. three for like three months. <laughs> and then I'm out of business and shit. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Who is on that? Was Hewitt on that? That was uh, that was T Bone's company. That was Tyrone Olson's company and shit. Oh. Uh, and right after Osiris, they had, they had uh, kicked him some shit, and then uh, he started. Him. And then I think that was like a year or so that they did it, and then it, w- it went out of business and shit. But it was like Tyrone, Brian Amers, uh, Matt Brode, and a couple other heads I, I forgot. But okay. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk to you about the um, pig uh, video. It was called Slaughterhouse, right? slaughterhouse brother <laughs> dude that thing's pretty sick i was just kind of viewing it this morning to get like you know like we said our memories aren't always great but i forgot like dude lizard king slash baka ragdoll yourself yeah. like the, the, video, is, the yeah. video is sick actually like uh slash's part is insane you're like wait is that slash <laughs> you know he's like a little different skinnier like version yeah. of him he's got black hair sometimes right. um, Baca, you know that shit was you know <laughs> see that's what and, i'm saying is like, times. <laughs> that's when those dudes came onto my radar and i'm yeah. wondering like was that kind of your first experience with them like do you remember meeting lizard for the first time and baka for the first time and all that <laughs> uh for sure for sure uh so when pig started it was originally it was uh adrian mallory uh oh, adrian myself, uh and uh charlie castelluzzo ah. uh so those were the original three that was like all right we're, we're gonna push these three and then we're gonna add people as we go and then we they added slash uh like a few months later uh and then we took a trip out to Vegas uh, to visit Baca, Sammy, and shit to like, oh, let's go check this dude out. Like, he's he's pretty dope. Adrian found him. Like, Adrian found him at Desert West or no, I don't know what park. Fuck, I forgot. Desert Breeze. One of those Vegas local parks. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess Adrian was skating and then kind of saw Baca and shit and was like, yo, you should, you should probably fuck with this dude. Let's go take a trip out to Vegas and Met with Baca and uh, scale with him all all week. I think we're out there for a week, uh, but it was rad. He was fucking. He's 
a character, bro. He's dope. Like, Sammy's a homie. Recently, like, yeah, we got some good memories together and shit, dude. That whole crew and shit, dude. Like, yeah, me and Bach are fucking the homies, though. Like, <laughs> he's yeah. the man and shit, dude. He's the fucking man. Uh, and he killed it, too. You're like, yo, how the fuck is this dude skating so good? Just like, out of nowhere and shit and just doesn't give a fuck. Like, all right, like, yeah, put his ass on. And he has a great attitude. Yeah, fuck yeah. Mm. <laughs> he's the man and shit. And then, um, and then Lizard got on, I think around that same time. Yeah, around that same time and shit. Lizard's fucking amazing too and shit. And he had he had crazy pop too at that fucking Yeah, moment. airwalks like, yeah. everywhere. Uh, he was on green room for fucking life and shit. <laughs> he was already uh, green room and fucking we out to do do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Ragdoll, yeah, Ragdoll was like the premier, I guess, pro at that time that they actually mm-hmm. added because it was all kind of AMs. It was just an AM company at the time. Then they're like, all right, let's add a pro. Let's let's get it going. And Ragdoll came on at that time at that time. And then Nuge came on like literally like the last last leg of everything. Oh, Nuge was on there too. Kila! Yeah, yeah. Fools may not know, but Nuge was on Pigwood for like the last leg of it. Like not much. I think he might have had an ad, and then that was. And then it then something happened and uh, it fizzled out. I think Josh Beagle ended up leaving the company, and then it just went to shit after that. So it was at the Tomiato, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the video though. That was, I think that was dope. You know, it was it was an interesting mix of people and shit. So it was like, yo, like, you got me, you got Charlie, you got Adrian, you got Baca, you got Slat. You're like, what? you got Rack. You're like, what the fuck is this video going on here, dude? Like, most like, and then it's me because I'm like, I'm the only one that's playing like hip hop and fucking <laughs> rapping the whole fucking uh, right. The whole, you the had whole, MF Doom, video. right? Yep, MF Doom, RIP yeah. MF Doom. But yeah, that's fuck that. Yeah. Dude, hey, I love that shit. So, uh, but it was good, you know. We we sat in, and you know, we all kind of had a chance to, you know, uh, sit down and see where all all our parts at. And you know, Beagle was very hands on with a lot of things, and uh, the premiere was fucking dope. And man, yeah, that that was definitely you know classic for me. <laughs> was that your first video part? Mm-hmm. Yeah, first first introductory of just whatever it was going on and shit, and. Um, uh yeah it was it was cool it was quite so crazy it was kind of last minute too because everyone was just like all right we're making a video what y'all got what y'all what y'all got cool all right like all right like we filmed we went on a couple trips and shit we stacked fucking 10 heads in one fucking hotel room and shit and right it was slimy at that time. <laughs> who who would you film with were you filming with shockus or who who's your no, film? uh it was a couple tomato filmers oh uh, okay I think this dude, Greg, I forgot his last name. Uh, and then uh, I was mainly filming with Ivory a lot. So oh, was, Ivory, yep. Yeah, I'd just go out with Ivory. Like, that was, like, my go-to dude. And that's pretty much, you know, he picked me up and we go out and do our thing. Or, you know, whoever else, Rhino would be around and shit. And oh, stuff did like you that. know Rhino early? Yeah, yeah. I've known Rhino since I was, like, fuck, 12. Oh, 13. okay. I was young. I went on my first trip with Rhino a bunch of heads and shit to Arizona. It was like fucking 13 people deep and shit, dude. And like, they had to ask permission for my moms and shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a car full of fucking adult, uh, fucking grown heads. And I'm like the fucking, you know, the kid, you know how it goes and shit. And uh, that was, yeah, that was a, a, quite a time. <laughs> was that when Rhino was living with P-Stone at Andy Max? Uh, I believe so. You know, Rhino's a fucking, you know, good talker. And he, like, persuaded my mom, like, everything's going to be cool. We got him. Like, he's safe, you know. Yeah. Like- <laughs> you, feel, you feel like you're in good hands with Rhino. He'd be the great, oh, yeah. like, TM dude that's just coming in and be like, no, nope, we got this. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's fucking dissolved so many random fucking encounters. I'm like, I don't know how we got out of that. But you did it, and goddamn, like that's yeah, that's the dude you need if you get into some shit. He will, you mm. know, get you out of some things. I'm like, wow, how the fuck did we get out of that? <laughs> I was tripping because I was watching your part in that pig video, and there's the old SF spot that we fucking man, that thing was so sick. Uh, I don't even know how you describe it, but it's just like flat banks with kind of hips and stuff. But you had to ollie up to skate it, but you could also ollie over from the top end and i think you did like front crooks maybe like 
Oh, yeah. Shove it to fakey or something yeah, into it. A quick big spin thing or whatever. Okay, yeah. I um, fucking love that spot. That was so dope. Dude, that place was sick. We used to put like a little board at the bottom and people would use it kind of like a big hip, like launching shit over it. But uh, right. man, that spot was tight. I was like, damn, you skated that sick. Yeah, I got to skate that. I got to skate that a few times. Went out to SF uh, a bunch of times and I think that was like the second trip. But I was like, we got to go back to that spot because it's the fucking sickest spot you could do. There's so many options and possibilities and just get creative and learn something new and do something. You're like, yo, that was amazing and uh just how the whole layout of the whole spot was I'm like man like i wish that place was still there too man it would be something else but Fuck uh, yeah. yeah that was that was one of the funnest spots in the sf at that time for sure man like, i love that shit give me a good josh beagle story was he kind of like a mentor like is he like a dude that's kind of like telling you guys what's right and wrong <laughs> or like is he more like one of your equals or like how did you look at him yeah, he was, uh, you know, Beagle's Beagle and shit. You know, he's he's the fucking, he's the man. He's quite the character to uh, <laughs> too many drunken stories. <laughs> he got kicked out of Vegas. Fucking, uh, uh, yeah, he got kicked out of Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> Basically, we got kicked out of one of the hotels because we were in Vegas. Uh, it was me, uh, Ragdoll, Baca, Slash, charlie beagle and i brought a homie just to like i brought a homie just like yo you come on the trip too they're down to like you know hop in the van and shit yeah uh, one night I, they're fucking faded uh and they come back up to the hotel and i get like they got hop out of the elevator and we're at like the, the top story basically and shit and all of a sudden i guess like beagle just <laughs> punches the fucking window and it breaks i'm like <laughs> what the fuck like what, what 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 is going on here? I mean, like most of us are in the hotel room and shit, so there's all this commotion and shit, uh, and they're fucking belligerent, drunk and shit. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm like, um, we're all younger too, and it was a young team and shit. Only only adults were Ragdoll and Beagle. Yeah. <laughs> like some time went on, we're like, dude, what's going on? And then the fucking security comes up, and mind you, this is like seriously, this is like three a.m. in the morning and shit too. So we're like, all right, it's still dark. There's a whole commotion for like a little bit. Security comes, all this the hotel security. Uh, they're like, yeah, y'all need to leave. Like, y'all need to go. And we have like four or five rooms where like of people that are like, yeah, everybody needs to dip. We're like, fuck, where the fuck are we going to go? Like, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. Like, okay. Like, they're, they're like, yeah, get out of here before like if something happens and shit. And so we dip. And we're like, all right, we got to sleep in the van now and shit, dude. And all of us are scrunched in the van. So we drive to the, we were, we we're supposed to do a demo the next day too. We got a demo. Uh, so we're in the van just like sleeping and shit. And then like hours go by and the sun's like coming up. It's morning time. We're like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Like now they got to go back to the hotel because they've left some shit. And I'm like, oh man, this is going to be interesting. So we get back to the hotel Uh and instantly, they're already on high alert and shit. So mm -hmm. they're like, they weren't even getting past security even in the front door and shit. And there's a back and forth commotion between security and all this shit. Uh, ragdolls yelling at fucking heads. Fucking fools want to fight. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, this is like six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we're like, oh, I want to get the fuck out of here. Like, dude, I, I, we got a demo right after this. Like, literally, like, got a demo like at 10 or 11 or something like that. And they're like, dude, this is insane right now we're like going through all night basically up all night and shit dude these dudes are fucking punched out a window just because they just felt like it <laughs> uh, and i'm like all right well uh and then we dip and we do the demo like fuck a few hours later and i just remember fools being so fucking fried after that like fools weren't weren't, weren't doing shit so. <laughs> <laughs> that was just one of very many of fucking just crammed fucking hotel stories and shit yeah uh, yeah, Beagle's dope, and I actually ended up living with him for uh, probably about a year. Oh no so, way! I mean, yeah, I ended up like I didn't have a place to stay. I was like, I was pretty much homeless and shit. And he was like, "Yo, like you stay in my house and shit." I'm like, "Word, like fuck, all right." So put me up for for a while and shit, and fucking did our thing, and you know, but yeah, he's he's definitely a great dude. And, 
But uh, I haven't seen him lately, though. I'd like to see him soon this year. Yeah, I haven't seen him in, in a while. I don't know what he's up I'm pretty to. Sure he's a chef. I think he's a chef, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like a like a culinary specialist and shit. So last yeah. I heard, last I heard. <laughs> I, I got to go get a steak from Beagle. <laughs> Facts, bro. That's a fact, bro. <laughs> Uh, what was it like getting on Osiris? Because Osiris was like a big deal. And I mean, just in general, getting shoes sent to you is like kind of next level. Like for some reason, boards, wheels, trucks, all that stuff. It's super cool. I ain't putting it down. But shoes seems like, whoa, dude, I'm on some other level when you start getting shoes. And the shoe companies always seem to have more money. So you might be going on a little higher end trips and maybe a little further and traveling a little better and all that kind of stuff. Like what were yeah. those, those days must've been tight. Yeah. Yeah. Those days were cool. I had to work my way up on that, that level. I mean, where we all start, we get, you know, flow kick down to, you know, Hey, you're, you know, you're doing more and then, Oh, Hey, we want to train. Um, mm. uh, yeah, amateur was cool. It was like, uh, you know, just get now I'm fully on the team. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm getting ads now. I'm like, oh shit, that was a big deal because I didn't really get major ads like that and shit back then. Like we had a couple of pig ads, which was always dope, but uh, I wasn't, aside from anything else, there wasn't really nothing going on until uh, I got on Osiris. So that was a, and they were, they were a big push for me and shit at that time. Mm. Uh, we did a lot and shit and then that was like the build up we building up this is the age of where people or in companies used to build people up to have you know you know a, a longevity of a you know career but uh uh so that was like that was like key for me you know i was like damn all right dude i could actually take this shit somewhere you know at the time i'm like you know mind you i'm i'm like what was that about fucking 16 oh shit 16 17 yeah about that and i was like i was homeless basically and shit so i was like bouncing around from couch to couch i've been on my own since i was 14 so uh i was just bouncing around through homies couches that let me stay on the couch and you know on to the next one type of shit trying to skate trying to do something i'm like dude i I feel like i could do something like nobody sees the vision yet but i feel like there's something here for me and shit dude Mm. so um, then Osiris rolled out, and then uh, uh, when Black Label turned when turned me pro, and uh, yeah, John fuck, gave me a board. That was that was a game changer for me for sure, you know. Um, so that's when it bumped up to like, all right, now I'm on a, pl- a pro pro level. Now you know I'm getting paid like a pro and shit. And then now negotiation starts. And then mind you, I'm like I'm coming from nothing. I was getting nothing, couple you know hundred bucks here and there to like, oh shit, here I'm like, oh fuck, what the fuck, like damn, I don't even know what to do. Like, okay, like, nobody <laughs> told me about this. I don't, I don't know guidance on this shit, but I'm just going to mm. flow and uh, build up from here and shit. Uh, yeah. so, and it was moving a lot at the time. We were traveling, like, dude, we were going fucking everywhere and shit. I was gone every month and shit, dude, like, for periods at a time on that. On that it home. was after the storm, right? After the storm and after another subject to change, they had another video after the storm. It was subject to change. Okay. And, and then feed the need came. Uh, mm. So, and once that, I think that the feed the need basically the, cause I was amped at the time and that pretty much pushed me to, you know, another, another height and, uh, and which, you know, eventually John Sherman pro buy it, you know? Right. And, uh, Oh shit! Unexpected. I'm like, fuck. All right, like, sh- whatever, whatever you say goes, buddy. Like, <laughs> yeah, especially from John Sale. Yeah, I'll take it, Stan. <laughs> Absolutely. Who is? Who uh, are the big dogs on I- Osiris when you got on there? Like Jerry and them were gone, right? Jerry was still around. Jerry oh, he was, was still there. Yeah, he was still there for about a year. Um, then he phased out and he went, you know, did his thing with America. And then, you know, Corey Duffel was still on. Yeah, baby. Diego was still, Diego Bichere was oh, still. Oh, yeah. Clint. The butcher. Yeah, the butcher, the big butch. Uh, he's dope as hell. Hell yeah. Uh, Clint Peterson, Rattray. Oh, uh, right, Rattray. Brandon was uh, on the time, like, for like a little, t- he got, got back on when I was on, and then something happened, then some weird shit. Oh, Cyrus, weird shit. They always had some weird weird uh behind the scenes shit that didn't sit well with a lot of people over the years so you know <laughs> uh but you know for the time being you know it was a good travels you know great people we freaking we were you know doing it and shit you know and 
Um, it was a for an unfortunate end of that shit. <laughs> where where did you go? Like, where was one of the? Did you go to Dubai or anywhere fucking super sick that you're like, Jesus Christ, where am I? Uh, didn't go didn't go to Dubai. That would have been crazy. Uh, I mean, like Germany, France, um, Czech Republic. Got all these damn places. It's all a blur now and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spain, um, like Barcelona and whatnot. Yeah, Barcelona, right? Bilbao. Mm. A lot of uh, a lot of. I uh, went to Canada. Fucking yeah, they don't like me over in Canada, dude. <laughs> no, the customs don't like me, dude. They don't Damn. like any Americans in Canada. It's the hardest they, place to get through customs, even for everybody. It's like, yeah. but they don't like weed there. If you bring no, weed, you're, yeah, anything. I had like a little. I, I like had gotten uh in a jam like uh like years prior like i got locked up and uh nowhere near canada or anything and shit but whatever was on your record it still pens for 10 years uh even the, the most littlest thing uh, little minor ass things and shit will still be on record it's still like uh, dui and all that shit but i didn't have any of that i just had something else that i was like so i fly to fucking canada thinking that i'm gonna get in they're like hold up buddy like yo what there's nobody else in the airport too and I'm like why y'all why y'all stopping me y'all let everybody all my all the rest of the team went through but me and i'm like why why pull me into the office i'm like yeah see this says you have a rap a rap sheet like what are you talking about like yeah you went to like that was five years ago prior to me being here what does this have to do with anything they're like well then they told me like their whole fucking laws i'm like for real Nobody told me this before and shit. So basically like, yeah, we're gonna have to send your ass back and shit. And we're like, what? I just spent fucking hours flying here just to get rejected. Oh. <laughs> but they were like, all right, since whatever and shit, they like basically I had to pay a little fucking uh, a visit fucking tax. They're like, yo, basically, yo, slide us, slide us 200 bucks and we'll let you in for 10 days, basically, and shit. And I was like, what? For real? So I had to fucking pay out of pocket just to slide into fucking Canada for 10 days. And then uh, after that, they're like, yeah, if you stay any longer, we're going to take your ass to jail. I'm like, what? Like, dude, they're stern about it. They weren't even like sugarcoating shit, dude. I'm like, bro, like, what the f y'all are wild over here. Y'all never been. No, don't get me started. Okay, let me just take my shit, <laughs> do what I need to do, and dip back out. And then, uh, but yeah, I tried to go to Canada again, like, uh, probably a little while after that yeah they didn't deny me after that no um, way oh yeah, they, man they were like nah you're gone and set my ass back home i'm like fuck never been to canada see, again sorry see, that's the, yeah it's <laughs> the thing i always say like i love canada i love it it's beautiful it's a, and the people are super cool there and nice and everything mm -hmm. but the border like getting in there yeah always gave me anxiety like the flights only like i think it's like two and a half hours to get to vancouver from sf but like dude one time i got off the plane and they were filming a reality show called border patrol <laughs> so the whole thing is like they're trying to dramatize fucking with people and i'm like dude i'm already got anxiety like I hate <laughs> this shit like what the and they're like why are you here why you got your camera like what's all this ba 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 are you trying to make money what are you doing ba 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 i was like dude i'm going to a contest i'm here for like five days like uh and it just yeah. it, it was always like almost every skater i was with had to go to secondary and got strip yeah. searched and i was just like dude this is kind of a lot for fucking yeah, yeah so they're tripping and they know they could do that shit and you're like but what you yeah, gonna this do it's a power trip you you feel defenseless you're like holy shit i'm like yeah Whoa. yeah you got no say in anything and like just take it and whatever they're gonna do with it fucking be prepared for it <laughs> yeah crazy but i know you're you you got into filming i'm wondering if that was maybe the time where you kind of start getting into filming because you're you're are you living with russell houghton for a minute yeah, I was uh, I was living with him for a while, a long time, uh, even before I was like, you know, starting to do a lot of things. He took me in and uh, I started filming with him a lot. Uh, that was the feed the need. He filmed uh, like he filmed everything, uh, uh, everything. And I was just sitting. I literally had, I was sitting in the bay with him for hours, locked in the dungeon, just watching him fucking just, you know, create, do his thing. You know, he was he was cool enough to, to you know, let me know a few things, give me some info. And I'm just interested. And I'm like, yeah, let me see what you're doing here. Let me see how you edit. Let me see. Yeah. You know, over here because he's amazing, bro. Like he's 
He's one. I think he's one of the dopest dudes, and fools don't even know and shit. Like fools oh, know. Man. If you know, you know. But Russell is one of the dopest dudes out and shit. He was always pushing the thing. That yeah. shit where he did like uh, they were skating the the spot. I think in slow mo and everything else is oh, like yeah. fucking time lapse behind yeah. it. He would always do shit where you're like, wait, how the fuck did he do that? Yeah, and then he say, "Oh yeah, this shit took me six hours to do one clip for <laughs> a six second clip. Took you six or something out. Damn, like bro. I mean, that's next le- next level of dedication. I'm like, yeah. I'm inspired by that shit because I I get inspired by the things that I see. Then I'm like, yo, mm. some of the things that he does too that I'll implement in some of the stuff that I'm like, yo, that's dope. I want to try to do that too. And you know, I, I definitely took a lot of inspiration with him and in, in video and how he sees things, angles and uh and just the drive and motivation and shit so i'm like yo like I, i'm interested so yeah i picked up a camera too and you know it, i was traveling a lot so i'm like i'd see i'd skate with all the you know best heads out at that time and shit and i'm like fuck i get to travel with them why not bro like i'm gonna take yeah. photos like, i got hard drives of shit that i still haven't even like shown nobody that i have stuff of like photos and videos of dudes from 10 15 years ago just skating shit and uh like always trying to find something to put it somewhere to do with it and shit but uh-huh. but it was always so, something so interesting to you know be around and you know it's like once in a lifetime type of shit for you know in our in our space too you know i want to capture the moment for you know most of these dudes it, even though you know rhino's in the background doing his thing or whoever yeah. doing, i'm just you know i'm in the background not doing nothing it ain't going nowhere it's going to my hard drive right <laughs> so yeah they were cool enough to you know to, you know let me do my <laughs> thing background and shit and you know i i know I knew, I knew I knew the assignment and shit. I know what the, what it takes. You know, I know not to leak <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like to leak it and push it out there because they want to be the first to do a shit. And it was different at that time. It was like, yo, it was serious shit when you when you'd actually like fucking leak something. And you're like, yo, they're using it for something. Like, you can't do that. Like, let mm. them do their thing. But uh, but yeah, it was always something in the background that I like to do and shit. And and then and then I do it a little more now and you know kind of implement it for myself and. Whoever's kind of cool and, you know, you know, creative and got something going and, you know, it's always fun and interesting to find the eye and, you know, create something out of it. What's <laughs> something that you took from Russell? Did, is there anything that sticks out that you remember that he kind of taught you or anything that you learned from watching him? Shit. Fucking. I mean, yeah. Visually, I like learned a lot of editing and like just things from him, even asking questions of like, yo, what's this or camera equipment, uh, lighting, fucking uh and you know just pushing limits to it i think right after it was before it it was definitely ahead of its time but he filmed a video purely off the uh iphone and this is before like all the iphones were like they were good but nobody was like doing it like him in in this space of like yo we all have to film off of fucking you know vx 1000 vx 2000s to you know the fucking sony cams and shit hd Mm. uh but he was pushing the limits of like, I'm going to film this whole project. I, I'm pretty sure it's a New Balance project. Uh, but he filmed it all with the iPhone and just various lenses. And I'm like, damn, how he did everything. I'm like, bro, obviously he's a, a wizard in post and shit. And he'll fucking make that shit look amazing. Mm. Uh, no matter what you shoot it off and shit. Uh, and it was just like, yo, after that, I'm like, I could do everything off my fucking phone. Fuck this. <laughs> That's where it's going to. But it was before like anybody was really filming a lot of stuff on their phone, which, you know, people are still not doing it as much. But if you go look back at his project where he just filmed this this segment off a of phone, you wouldn't even believe it was off a of phone. You're yeah. like, yeah. And before the phones looked this good now, you know? So uh, yeah. that was one thing. It was like, damn, like, I think that's some next level shit. And of like, I could do it myself because I'm I'm self-taught on a lot of shit. So I'm like, yo, I need to. Uh, I'm not as fucking good as this dude, but I'm trying to like emulate little things that I'm like, okay, I could progress at it and take certain things from him and just implement it myself. And hopefully, you know, I could uh, aspire to be as good as this guy and shit, and uh, just have that vision too and stuff like that. You know, without all the crazy fucking camera equipment that he got. 
<laughs> I'm like, he got that red. He got he got production worthy shit. So I'm like, yo, I'm you know, uh, I'm the I'm the skater. And I'm like, I'm not the full time videographer guy. I'm the hobbyist and shit. So <laughs> yeah, 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 for real. <laughs> but eventually, no. though, I'd like to make little short little short films and stuff like that. I've I've been kind of interested in a lot of stuff that like that lately, and I've been filming filming some music videos lately too. It's been pretty interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. Like hook up like a rap video or something recently I saw on your Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah, for the homie and stuff like that. So I always always felt like that was a, a cool little thing and fun yeah. to edit and shit because I can just play around with a lot of shit. And, uh, and and it's like it, it's different too. It's kind of the similar of like how skate skate editing and skate videos are, but it's a little more intricate and visual visually and stuff. Yeah, so it's kind of just fun to play around with and shit. And because I can see I see a lot of stuff. I'm like, yo, I could do that. And then I go to do it. I'm like, oh, I did that. And then I'll do something. I'm like, oh, they did it too. Because I just thought of it. I didn't think I was going to see it, but they did it too. So I'm like, all right, I think I'm in the right direction. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. No, I think uh, I always look at stuff, you know, as a filmer and I'm like, whoa, that yeah. I could do better than that. Yeah, not the hate or nothing, but it was no, just like. No, more power to them. It's all about, you know, your connections and who you, for, you know, you know, absolutely. You, you do your shit and not knocking that. That's great opportunity but then it's just like it, it gives you you know motivation and hope for like things that like oh i can see that for myself you know no matter what we're doing and shit doing no matter what we're filming so we're like all right i could probably do that like i see some movies i'm like i could film a movie <laughs> you know what i mean Dude, I would, that's a dream that's a fucking <laughs> yeah. dream so last year i was at the giants game and there's this like dude out on the field and he throws out the first pitch and it's flavor flav Oh yeah. <laughs> and I took a photo with him and I'm pretty sure you chimed in and was like, true or false, I'm related to Flavor Flav. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that is, is that true. true? That is true. Uh yeah. Fucking goddamn William Drayton. That's no way. Uh, is he yeah, he's on my dad, he's on my dad's side. My it was my my dad's oldest brother's son. So he's my cousin. No way. Have you ever yeah. kicked it with him? No, though. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Now he he much much older than me, so I was like, uh, I didn't find this out till I was like little, little like older in my teens, and I always thought it was bullshit too. I was like, quit fucking with me, dude. Like you're not nah nah. He's like, no, yeah yeah. Now I'm I'm all looking into it. I'm all looking into it, and then um and then I just keep confirming it. I'm like, damn, I, I really am. That's fucking pretty fucking. <laughs> And shit, dude. Flavor Flay. But uh yeah. He's one of the best type men out. Yeah, yeah. It was a trip and shit, dude. I was like, that's cool. And then my my uh, my my dad's brother actually confirmed it too, because he's from New York and uh and that whole side of the family and shit. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I'm like, damn, okay. Well, I wasn't bullshitting people. I ain't <laughs> uh, uh, oh, one day we, we, we can link in and shit. You never know. <laughs> so you mentioned it earlier, but to me, like the black label days has to be fucking just insane. John's one of the, you know, he's a pioneer and just an epic classic dude. He's always ran his shit like kind of on the low, like he's not doing it through a big corporation or nothing. It's a hands on thing. Jason yeah. Adams is in there stenciling shit. Like <laughs> you just have the vibe of these are skaters doing it yeah. their way. He has a very, very, you know, like J this is John shit. When you see yeah. it, you're like, John did that. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And like Chet Childress, Alfaro, all those dudes, like just talk about the uh, early, like getting on uh, with that. Cause we'll eventually get to King of the Road, which I need to like talk to you about <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, good old days, but yeah, Black Table days, man. Those are, those are some that I cherish uh, a lot and shit, you know, uh, from the early beginning to that was, uh, uh, I was at a contest. I was at a Dam Am, uh, Costa Mesa, and uh, this was, I think, actually the, the first contest I actually did really well at. Uh, I placed third, and huh. I honestly I should have fucking won. <laughs> <laughs> but you know those, you know those kids come in and fuck it up. And you're like, I almost had it. Who the fuck was <laughs> judging, man? <laughs> For real, but uh, Sinclair yeah, that was, me. <laughs> I had gotten done with the uh, a run or whatever, and I like I walked off the course, and then uh, this dude was like, "Yo, that was sick. 
and uh that was cool and it happened to be john and i was i was sick and uh and i walked away you know did my thing i was on osiris at that time because pig wood was under it went under and now just had the, the shoe sponsor basically for the am uh and I was, it was like a question like what the fuck am i gonna get on like am i gonna get on a, a board brand and, or am i, am I just gonna be a wash and shit and be another one just to you know move it along and shit and then uh-huh. uh and then I th- right after that contest, about like a week later, uh, Kong uh, from Osiris, he was team manager at that time, hit me up. He's like, hey, fucking John Lucero hit me up. He wants to like, you know, talk and, you know, see see uh, what you're thinking about, you know, Black Label. Do you have any thoughts about, you know, trying to get on Black Label? And mind you, at this time, I had no thoughts of like, like what? Like, I, I I know Black Label very well. I know John very well. Like, I'm just, you know, a knowing of the brand and shit. And uh, and for me, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a young black skater. I got dreads, I'm baggy plant, pants. I'm com- kind of the complete opposite of the, the whole brand and shit, dude. Yeah. But, but it was like one thing of like to really think about of like, yeah, if you, you got on any other board company, it was like, you know, things were like, oh, that made sense, all oh, this. And it was like kind of a, uh, a strategic move of like, well, like there's label and like John and you know that that could be something that fools are not even expecting and shit, you know. And it was like, and I think John saw it too. It was like, yo, like this could you know spark a little interest and something, you know. And uh, so I went up and talked to John and uh, we we chopped it up and he was fucking amazing. So I'm like, yeah, I think that's my decision. I'm gonna fucking get on label and shit. And, mm. Like, yeah, the day after I was on label. And uh, so, yeah, and then we go on some trips and get, you know, tied in, tapped in. I go up to the, the his little, his warehouse at the time up in Costa Mesa, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, getting boards, doing our thing and traveling with Osiris. So it was like perfect. So it integrated perfectly. So, uh, and then I got my first ad and I was like, all right, cool. This is, this is, you know, you know, moving, it's working our way up. And mm-hmm. I think caught off guard, like, damn, label, black street, like this. Okay. This is, this is different for sure. This is interesting because this is the complete opposite of what anybody thought, I think, and shit, dude. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, yeah, I think it was about, I was am for about two years, I believe so, until he, uh, he gave me my board and shit. And I was like, completely uh, caught off guard yeah come up to the office and shit i'm like all right cool uh another random day you know just we've been up there all the time and shit we we skate we chill skate the curves fucking chop it up you know go to lunch bullshit uh and then uh we're we're talking and he's like one of those things he's like like one of those hints like hey hey look i'm not gonna tell you yet but like hey look what i got behind me type of shit I'm like, I'm oblivious as fuck. I'm probably stoned to the bone too. And she's like, I don't know what's going on. Let's fucking what's going on and shit. And, uh, and then, uh, and then there's like a rack of my boards and shit. And I was like, what the fuck? Like for real? Like, okay. I get, I I guess like what, if you stay, it's cool. I'm cool. (laughs) Yeah. uh, and that's where my pro journey started with uh, with label, and it was it was the funnest experience. Like we traveled a lot, dude. Alfaro and the boys, uh, Chet, fucking Chris Troy, mm. uh, um, dude. That was some good time. Jeff Grasso, you know, it was fucking oh yeah. Um, man, so many heads and shit. But it was like that was some of the funnest times and shit. And John always kept it straight up real and shit. He always kept it like, yo, this is what we're doing. Uh, everybody on the, the, this level is pretty much equal. Like, you know, every pro is literally equal on a level. And then y'all, you know, do your thing with, you know, boards and stuff like that. But he kept it like across the board with heads. Like nobody was bigger than nobody. Even if they had a bigger name and shit like that, it was kind of like, oh shit, like that's fucking rad. Uh, and he always kept it informed you know a lot of like companies just don't keep shit informed and then you'll get hit at the last minute and shit and like dude if something was wrong with the company and he fucking like he ain't sugarcoating it's like yo mm. we gotta we gotta do like i didn't get paid for a whole year just by the fact that like yo i know what you're going through like he had to do this that and i'm like i was cool with it and it was like and it was still at the point where like i was had osiris and a couple other companies too that i b- belonged to at the time mm. and it was, 
CEO, man. I know how it is. Board brands, it's different because it's board brands, shoe companies, clothing companies, different brackets. You know what For I mean? For sure. Yep. <laughs> and obviously, you get the more more money on the clothing and the shoes and shit. But we all know how board brands are. Every every board brand is different. But uh, at the time, he was you know he was doing well and shit. He was doing still decent enough. You know, board sales. Mm. Uh, Graphics were coming out every three months. So that was, I think that was the dopest shit. Cause no, like it's so like most of these companies, they don't have boards coming out so often. It's so frequent like that and shit. Mm-hmm. He was just, he wanted to keep everything fresh, new, whatever it may be and shit. He didn't want to have things just stagnant and just sitting on the shelves and shit. Right. Uh, and uh, he always kept it raw like that. And he was always the, you know, the artist, the everything and shit. So he did his thing and, um, Man, like, yeah, I've, I commend him on everything he does and shit. He's like one of the realest ones that I've got to be a part of. And I was blessed to be a part of, you know, the whole squad. I was sad as fuck when I fucking had to leave that shit. And I'm like, my heart broke for sure. I thought, I thought, I think I was more fucked up than, than anybody else was and shit. <laughs> but, um, what was the first graphic? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, that was, uh, my, it was like a Newcastle beer replica of uh, it was a Ninja Star. Uh, it was brown, had a Ninja Star, and it had a, a dragon going up uh, around it. And it, it said then it said brewed in San Diego. It was pretty cool. And John uh, drew it. Yeah, John did everything and shit. That's so, so sick. I'm like, man, yeah. He always has the dopest shit. He always came out with the dopest graphics, dopest <laughs> fucking concepts, dopest collection. Like, I, th- those are collectibles, bro. Like for real. What, I, I consider uh, like a brand to have collectibles on everything they do is like, dude, you can't go wrong. That's art. That's everything. That's lifestyle. That's fucking skateboarding and shit. And I'm like, dude, and he's still fucking kicking it and still fucking nailing it to this day and shit, dude. So, I know. Wow. Big shout out to John for sure. Shout out. Well, let's go to 2007 King of the road. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty crazy because it was my first trip with Jake that was the yeah. first time I ever flew with the Felper. And I was yeah. kind of nervous. I was like, fuck, flying <laughs> with this maniac. And then I got a room with this maniac and I had never done it before. So I, I'm a guy that gets anxious before trips anyway. <laughs> so that one was extra, you know, like, Ugh. but it turned out to be the most insane thing because we went to Milwaukee. It's the midway point for the, uh, for the king of the road. And yep. what's his name? Daniel Haney. He flies yep. in and he's got a fucking parachute with them. And we pick him up. We're like, dude, what? <laughs> that, yeah. that will stick out as one of the craziest. <laughs> but um, they had the midway contest there and everything. And then Jake just jumped into your guy's van and did the second half. Yeah, so, that was unexpected as fuck. I, I don't know how that even fucking happened. But he's like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm riding with y'all now. I'm like, what? Uh, all right, you know, it's Rhino, P Stone. Uh, yeah, that was his team. I mean, crew. once Preston and Rhino are in there, it was easy for him to pick. Like that's what <laughs> I'm going really, with. It really yeah, it really was. He's like, let's fucking do it and shit, dude. And mind you, the, it's, you know, Felpers, you know, it's Felpers and shit, dude. It's you either love him or you either hate him. <laughs> yeah, like dude, I, I was, I was fucking stoked. Like he was. It was it, it was definitely intimidating at times because it was like yo he did fucking dude and he's like literally the walking encyclopedia of fucking <laughs> skateboarding somehow I don't know how he remembers so yeah. much shit that I'm like yo no how do you remember this there's no way you remember this of that that and when it happened yeah. you're fucking, you're a nut and that's fucking that's amazing mm. and uh, yeah so he hopped in the van and it was fucking pure madness ever since that shit dude and it was like it w- we had 30 packs every fucking day <laughs> he'd come up and come bring a 30 pack bow rack of th- let's go fuckers I'm like let's fucking do this and shit oh like, yeah dude slamming fucking beers all the way through the trip uh and then this is this is what king of the road was was like basically two weeks long or like it was a little longer than they they were doing it uh before they were only doing it like a yeah short i think time. it was east coast to west coast right yeah yeah it was that yeah it was a it was a good stretch so it was a good two weeks so uh and yeah it was fucking dude he he was definitely hype of the fucking motivation like hype of the sesh uh he'd fucking smoke all our weed uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was at a one point in time 
that were like, yo, we cannot pass this full the fucking joint. It, it's not by the the fact that we didn't want to give it to them. It was literally we we roll a fucking fresh spliff, fucking light it up, smoking it. And he'd be like, in, he'd be in the front. He's always in the fucking front. So he didn't even need to look. He'd be like this and shit, be like this. <laughs> and we're like, dude, all right, like, give you know, give you know. Beginning, it was fun. He'd be smoking and chilling, passing it. But then he, we'd brand new fucking split, smoke it, pass it to him. He throw it out the window. What? I was like, yo, <laughs> did he just fucking do that? Did he just? I, I'm tripping, right? I'm tripping. Okay, so we, we're, we're doing it again. We're smoking and shit. He does it again. I'm like, <laughs> he's tripping, dude. Like, does he know that's not a fucking brand new joint and shit, dude? Like, does he think it's a roach and shit? Like, I'm like, he's wild. And I'm like, yo, like, even if he wants the shit, you got to, yeah, oh, dog. Like, sorry, dog. Like, I'm like, we want you to smoke, but just stop throwing it out the window. <laughs> But that was, a, he was a character, dude. Like, you, was, you gotta tell the story about the ditch. Yeah, the ditch, though. The ditch. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> that was, that was great. I'm still tripping. At, it, it got on film and shit. Dude, the, yeah. The King of the Road uh, in the credits and shit. And uh, so we're at a spot where the ditch is like a bump and it goes into a fucking ditch. Pretty known spot in New Mexico. And, uh, uh, I'm trying to trick. I'm trying to fucking. Uh, I'm trying to tray flip in this ditch, and I'm like, it, how the bump was. It kind of extends you straight up, and then just drops you straight down. And I, I was having trouble getting my balance, and so I was like, fuck. I, like, let's just push on. Let's go to the next spot and shit. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm me thinking about it. I'm like, dude, I can't stop thinking about this damn trick. Like, we're still in town. Like, can, hey y'all, I'm sorry. Can we can we go back? And uh, <laughs> So we end up going back and shit, like a few hours later and shit, go back to the ditch. All the homies are like, uh, there's the the spot, ditch, and then there's like a, the bank, and then there's a flat up top, and all the homies are chilling on the top. Uh, and it was like Phelps, uh, fucking, yeah, P-Stone, Chris Troy, on the, on the top and shit. And I'm like, all right, still trying the trick. I'm getting back into the groove of things and shit. I'm like, I think I got it. So I fucking, I finally landed the trick, boom, stomped it, and I was like, sick. So I'm riding on the bank, and I'm riding back down the other bank, and then all of a sudden, I, I literally, I ollie, and midair, I just feel, I, I don't think anything hit me, really, and then I look on the ground, and it's a fucking, a splattered apple. And I'm like, what, wait, 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 wait. So, Phelps was on the top, smoking out of the apple, <laughs> mid smoke. I did the trick. He got hyped and was like, boom, through the fucking apple and ended up binking me in my head, <laughs> exploding all over my head. And I'm like, what the fools are like, oh my God. He, I think he thinks I'm going to go over there and just beat his ass. <laughs> and he's like, literally, like, shook, like, no, nah, I don't even know what the fuck happened and shit, dude. I'm like, that was actually kind of funny though, dude. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, you really <laughs> threw threw a smoking apple at my head, and it actually hit me. It, and and it wasn't like no short distance too. It yeah, it was launch. And I'm like, the the, the how it happened. The chances was, were like point eight percent. Insane. And then the fact that it was all caught on fucking film too. Pete Stone filmed it. You can fucking slightly see it and shit. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like, I don't know how that happened, but yeah, it literally exploded all over my head. And that was a wrap of their smoking session. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the trick, got the exploded apple on my head, and Phelps was hype. I guess that was a key moment and shit. So, <laughs> yeah, that's forever. And, yeah, it was all it was all worth it and shit. <laughs> was that the same trip where uh, the brakes almost went out when you guys were at the high elevation, the mountain? Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's some smart ass idea. Oh, uh, Burnett's smart idea. They're like, yeah, you got to go. <laughs> you got to time the, the the whatever peak of the, of the mountain. Peak. Like the, yeah. yeah, Pike's Peak. Uh, we're all trekking up there. Fucking Slash gets uh, altitude sickness while he's up there. Oh. Uh, we all pretty much start getting fucked up because we're not used to it and shit. And we're like, dude. But it was it, they had to do a kickflip on the top of the fucking on the very top of Pike's Peak, and then and that was the challenge. 
And uh, but the altitude was so gnarly at that time. I'm like, yeah, everybody's fucked up. Like everybody's kind of getting fucked up. And uh, and I think actually Slash ended up doing it. Uh, and then I ended up getting altitude sickness because we had to stop halfway through. So he had to throw up and shit. And then <laughs> by the time we we're getting back down, the brakes are fucking smoking because the just the hill and the, everything was just, it just couldn't handle it. And then yeah, there's a lot of weight. Again. Yeah, we had to stop again. We're like, dude, this is the most sketchiest. Who who thought of this challenge? Like, you literally almost fucking like, <laughs> you all almost slid us down the whole hill and shit, the whole mountain and shit. So, uh, and then we were just stoked just to get down. Like, dude, let's get the fuck out of here, onto the next city, dude, onto the next challenge, wherever that was. But mm-hmm. that was like the most randomest shit. And like, why the fuck we do that, dude? <laughs> Oh, uh, those challenges were crazy then, dude. They're Big like, time. I think they had to ease up on the challenges because they were getting fucking ruthless. Fools were getting pissed off. Fools were getting like, dude, like mad at one another for some, for most of these challenges and shit. Yeah, uh, there was definitely a learning curve. There was some things. <laughs> was like, oh, we're not doing that again. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it was some fucking just free for all type of shit. And they're like, well, fuck, we're we're pissing off everybody. Or we're fucking, yeah, it was it was definitely a wild king of the road experience and shit. <laughs> it's kind of one of my favorite endings though with the barrel jump. Uh, when yeah. it was like Nuge versus Slash, and I, I think they got up to like 13 or something where they would skate and then jump over the barrels and get onto another board. And they yeah. started at like four or five, and it went all the way to like 13, I think. Yeah. And then fucking, was it Slash? I think one, right? And he yeah, went out yeah. the door all sketchy. Like, yeah, yeah. that was we pretty were all doing it. We're all fucking jumping the barrels. We're like, oh, this is sick. But I think by the time it was like, hit the five mark we're like we're all over it we're like mm. and then the only two dudes were like oh we're, we're keep going we keep going and those are the ones you see and shit and you're like yo it was getting wild but they were extending their body and shit dude it was the most fucking just big base jump type shit yeah there. Like, yo, what the fuck uh yeah 13 is outrageous though been going yeah. that fast because fools were slamming though too. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> That was the whole point. A full, it was a carcass toss. Yeah, of course. Just get slammed and it's handled and shit, though. <laughs> uh, that was a that was a good ending. Everybody was fucking killing it and raging. So, did you go from label to Santa Cruz? Was that or was there something in between? Yeah, I went from label over on to Santa Cruz. Yeah, that was the the devastating pivotal moment that I was shook by because. I, I probably didn't want to do it, you know, because it was like, yo, I love John, dude. It was shit. It was the shit, you know. We did our thing, and you know, and then and, you know, unfortunately at that time, like, dude, I'm older now. I'm like, dude, I gotta live. Like, this is how I'm living now, and shit. Like, all right, I gotta, I gotta find some opportunity. And and even prior to that, Eman and right now, I think, I think Eman, I think he kind of wanted me to get on like a, a like way before probably like a year prior. And I was like, nah, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm riding with John, you know, I'm mm-hmm. hope he makes it out of, you know, we're, we're going to continue to do this thing. And, and then it just got to the point where we're like, yo, like you should jump on over here. Yeah. I think right after an indie trip, it was like, what up again? And like, I was like, fuck man, you're not wrong and shit. Like I want to, I want to keep moving. I want to keep elevating. I like, I hate being stagnant and shit. And I was like, I need to keep progressing. And I think this is, I could progress over here, I guess, you know, and uh, uh, it was E-Man it, uh, at the time. Rhino was heavily involved because obviously NHS. Strubing. Strubing. Um, the TM at the time, Jordan Tabioyan. Uh, oh, yeah, Jordan. Shout out. Yeah, he brought me in and it was cool. He was always cool as fuck. Mm. And, uh, and then, yeah, we sat down and just kind of chopped it up and, you know, try to figure something else out and, you know, for what it was at the time. And it was like, you know, it wasn't, wasn't much, but it was something to like keep moving and keep going and grooving. And uh, so I was like, fuck, I made that leap. And then uh, like right after I see that was the most devastating call to fucking John. I was fucking shook. Yeah. But, you know, he, he's been through it. He's, he knows what's up. He's been fucking around for so long and he knows routine, you know, he, he wants to see nobody go on that, that, that type of tip and shit, you know, and, but you know, it's, you can only do so much and shit, you know, and, and in the end it was like, fuck man. Yeah. I got to do what I got to do. What's best for, you know, myself at this time. Cause I'm t- mind you, I come from nothing. I have nothing. I need to fucking keep going and keep things going. Cause nothing else is going to fucking happen for me unless I 
keep this fucking machine grooving. Mm. And so it was cool. It was cool at that time. You know, the first couple of years was cool and shit. How long did you ride for them? Five years. Oh, okay. Yeah, the first couple of years were cool. Then I, just, I think that around like the last couple of years, the shift was just all over the place. And, and then and then a whole other bunch of shit came along with it. And and some people lie about a lot of things too and false accusations about myself of like things that I was doing and uh, which ultimately, ultimately fucking now led to, you know, me getting off and shit. And it was fucking... Threw me for a loop, but you know, it's sometimes uh, in this industry, some people really don't have your best intentions and shit. Mm. Uh, kind of looking out for themselves or whoever is around them and shit. And, and uh, yeah, fuck, fuck it. <laughs> so, what do you do in that moment? Like, are you fucking down and out for a while, or do you just say, I got to light the fire and fucking figure something else? Like, w what's your mentality? Yeah, that was because, uh, you know, the, my mentality, I was fucking, you know, I was moving and grooving. I was doing exactly what I was supposed to do and shit, you know. And uh, when I, they hit me with something that was, I, that, that I, they thought I wasn't doing, and it turned out to be completely wrong. And a lot of things that just shit didn't add up. And I'm like, dude, that shit don't sit well with me. I'm like, that's fucked up. So, uh, yeah, I called it out. It, it, it was what it was. I'm like, fuck, dude, like, fuck y'all for doing some shady shit. It's not the first time, you know, it's like, you know, Osiris did some shit. Uh, it's just the industry on that fucking saying tit. And like, dude, it's not personally with the fucking writer. It's crazy because it's business. Obviously, we're in the business and shit. But there's mm -hmm. a way to do fucking certain things, and especially uh, out of respect. What we're obviously all trying to fucking, you know, have respect towards. I can't respect a lot of the shit that they did, especially towards my fucking situation. And it was like, yo, that was dead ass wrong. Y'all knew it. And all your team knows it too. Uh, but you know, that's just, you know, not the way it fucking uh, worked out and shit. You know, I wish things were laid out a little differently because in the end, I don't give a fuck. Like I'll keep pushing. Like y'all didn't make me, y'all definitely ain't gonna break me. Mm. But, uh, uh, and it was like, fuck, man. But yeah, I was, I was, I, yeah, I was depressed for a while, man. I was like, what the fuck happened? What I do? Like, I did something like, what the fuck? And then, like, they're literally making me look fucking bad. And like, I'm doing something fucking wrong. And I'm like, man, that's, that's whack. But, and then it, you know, has a lot of choice of words on another platform that I, I thought was false. And uh, yeah, dead ass caught them in that. But uh, it's, it's particular people, and, you know, it's not, you know, the whole overall, but it's particular people in position uh, that determine somebody's fucking career and fucking, you know, choices after that and shit. And uh, especially if, uh, you know, you didn't do nothing wrong to the point where they say you're doing something wrong. That's dead ass. Like that ain't right. That ain't cool. No matter what, who company person is. But yeah, I left a bad taste and it'll be forever. But, you know, and then, you know, I'll move on. You know, I got to move on. I got to keep fucking moving forward. You know, like I did what I did and I, you know, put my guns out. I dropped what I dropped and, you know, I continue to do my thing and shit. And then, uh, and like I said, it was getting weird, weird and shaky for a few years. So the original, the team manager before had moved on to another company. And, uh, and then I pretty much eventually went over there you know where you know heads like that go i'll probably end up going too because they were always truthful and straight up to me and shit so uh and it, it's just unfortunate for a type of company like that that i thought was a lot more core and a lot more straight and straightforward and you know honest fucking wasn't but you know like i said it's power in position you know the people in position do, making these you know calls and judgments and shit and mm. off, no, off no base off no fucking you know facts so it's just but yeah, it is what it is. You know, I, I did my time. Much love to the fucking team writers. That's it. <laughs> I love E Man. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's one of the homies for so fucking long. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Who was the dude? Was it Jordan? Well, who was the TM that you followed? Uh Jordan. Yeah, Jordan was. Yeah, oh, so yeah. where did that, where did he go? He went. Did he go to Arbor? Yeah, he went to Arbor for a while and shit, and then. Oh. Uh, and then I jumped on over there and, um, you know, they've been fucking straight for me ever since and shit. Fucking stand up. You know, that's all I can ask for, you know. So it's like, man, I, I do my part. Y'all do your part. That's what we do. Right. Like, I'm, I know what it is. Like, I'm not a dummy and shit, dude. And I feel like sometimes I feel like when you're a lot, a lot, a lot more conscious in this in this space and in this industry, and especially with company base, they don't like that shit. They don't like that fucking like, you, you know, your shit, too, because mm -hmm. I've been in 
situations where like get caught off guard. Like I, I knew what, what I was talking about on things that they were doing. And then they got to fuck, you know, they got to cover their ass on some shit and, you know, do what they're going to do. And, you know, I ain't the first one that like a lot of these things happen to. And that's what's like, yo, it's crazy. But, you know, there's plenty of heads that get caught in bullshit like that and grips of other people's shit and make fault and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I, just, I didn't think it was right. Didn't think it was cool. And it sucks. It, it comes from people that, you know, for years it is what it is and you know got to push on and shit so here we are we still pushing on still doing my thing still riding for arbor uh still skating still stacking clips shit who ain't got no clips still stacking clips <laughs> hell yeah no, i'm just doing my thing and uh trying to deflect the bullshit now you know it's like uh you, you get to get to see a lot of insight uh, on a lot of the industry and companies that like, damn, like a lot of things I wish I'd, I I would have known before I would have probably moved a little differently and shit, but. But Arbor seems to be, be cool, huh? Like you're, yeah. Who we got? Yeah, we man. got Grayson. Grayson Fletcher, Ace Pelka. Oh yeah. Ace. Uh, Amelia Brodka, myself, uh. Jesse Arwood, Isaiah. Look, I'm missing somebody else. I'm blowing it. I should know these things. <laughs> no, it's all good. You know who they are. Go look at the Arbor page. Go, go, look go to arborskates.com. Check out the team. And you know, Sean Ives. Yeah, Sean Ives. There we go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Can't are they it. local, though? They're like in San Diego? Uh, they're out. They're based out in Venice. Oh, Venice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're based out in Venice. They got a shop out in Venice, and then they got another shop uh here in san diego and then you know it's an overall bigger brand of like you know snowboards longboards and street boards and stuff like that so that's where we come into play and shit so um but it's you cool. ever go snowboarding i've been once and i fumbled down that hill like nobody's business <laughs> that they had to drag me and take me back down the hill because i fucking suck uh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the same as skateboarding whoever says that shit y'all are tripping <laughs> Dude, have you seen these guys that do snow skating where they're not binded in? Like uh, John Shanahan just had a clip where he's like ollie and over a f- yeah. That shit Absolutely. fucking blew my mind. Tray flip downstairs. Like I was like, what yeah, that the? Shit, that shit's wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm my alley because I could bail. Uh, <laughs> I didn't I spend a lot of time in the snow in my life. So like when I go up there, I'm freezing and I don't really understand the <laughs> edge concept. So like I could snowboard, but I ain't great or nothing. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I did a couple little things, and I'm like, yeah, I'm fumbling down the hill. And I got all of these little kids laughing at me. I'm like, I'm sorry, you little four year old. I can't, I can't do it. You can't spin a nine, bro. What I know, right? Fuck? I can't spin a fucking 1080. <laughs> sorry, little, little little flying fetuses and shit, dude. Like, yo, know, they're too good nowadays. Like, all these kids are younger and younger. They're insanely good. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like next level shit nowadays next level shit (laughs) looking back at the history of everything like you mentioned billabong and osiris santa cruz black label uh pig what does one trip stand out to you like this was just the shit it's one big trip (laughs) the whole thing was a trip bro i've been smoking the whole time (laughs) (laughs) oh shit there's definitely some highlights man uh Spain was always a good time. That was like Osiris days, but we went to Spain a lot. Yeah. Uh, those, yeah, those, those days were fucking insane. Who were, who would show you around in Spain? Who were some of the homies, like the locals out there? Did you kick it with like Roberto or any of them? It was always really just locals. I forgot who, who was really about it like that. A couple heads have already been out there on it. Like Clint and all those heads are always out there and shit. Okay. So they like already knew of things. So we kind of just went with them. <laughs> Did you ever go with P-Stone? Uh, no, we never, no, no. Because P-Stone be like, ah, there's a hot dog spot down the corner <laughs> on the right, best hot dogs in Spain. And right then over there is the beer, you get that for the, he's got it all. You're like, how the fuck do you know all this shit? Right, you get the hashies down that alley and shit yeah. over there. And you're like, <laughs> Come on, Schmitty, I've, I've done a lot of miles out here. I've been out of here. I always that clip of P-Stone, bro, of him hopping around the poles. Oh, bro <laughs> canary island dude yo he was wild <laughs> and then just flat you're like yo that's a big boy to be flapping like that dude like fuck <laughs> that, 
okay, that was the one time in the history that I've known Preston, and I think I met him 98 or 99-ish, like around there. Um, right. In the history of me knowing him, after he ate shit in the Canary Islands was the one time where he quote unquote stopped drinking. But yeah. what what that meant was he could only have three beers a day. <laughs> oh my god! Because he was on this uh, he was on this shit because his leg was all infected. So he was on that I forget what it is, but it's something to like clean out your infection. And the doctor's like, no drinking. He's like, yeah, that means yeah. just only three beers. <laughs> <laughs> he was wild and i know yeah snuggy snuggy season and shit uh, oh the snuggy, uh, snuggy dude. boy that's we uh, that was our trip on the indie trip we started that shit uh and we, yeah we we bet him to wear snuggy the whole the fucking whole trip. trip i think it was like a i think it was like only like a hundred dollar bet or something like that it was something just random and then it was like oh to top it off hey you mind just only eating leftovers the <laughs> whole trip he was like, "Oh fuck yeah, I could do that." Like, like, no, nah, you couldn't do that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I'm like, "Oh, for real?" So yeah, he everybody would kick down everybody's leftovers, and that's all he would eat for a fucking week uh, with the snuggie on. All right, all and this is in fucking like Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. Uh, like, was that the big indie trip where they went around? It was like their anniversary or whatever. Uh, no, no, it was a small trip. It was oh, like okay. a, a few heads. Chet, yeah, Chet, E Man, myself, Taylor, Rhino, yeah, yeah Rhino, and there was another person I forgot, Keith. Oh, because I was talking to somebody about that. I was like, dude, I can't remember exactly, but I know. There was a trip where the Preston wore a snuggie the entire yep. trip. Whole I, trip, hot as fucking hell, <laughs> and like he hardly. I'm like, I'm not gonna say he probably hardly even showered in that motherfucker. Dude. Yeah, for sure. He, he, all the leftovers wore a snuggie and filmed everything <laughs> and did everything else on the fucking top of that. I'm like, yo, fucking champion style over here. But that was a that was a classic trip, and that shit still gets fucking <laughs> talked about to this day, dude. The fucking snuggy season and shit, dude. <laughs> Mm. Still killing it and skating in it too. They were fucking sick as backsmiths and fucking bowls and shit. You're like, uh, blunt. I miss that yeah. dude so much. We yeah. we have a lot of him throughout the office, and sometimes yeah. it hits me wrong, and I'm like, ah, I, you know, like you just get hit by it differently, different days, and it doesn't always compute but like most of the time i'm i'm stoked to like we got the keg killer thing up in my office and just reminds me of good times but sometimes i'm like fuck dude i miss him like you know like it's hard sometimes are you guys working on a video or anything with arbor uh working on some things i think everybody's like does their you know, separate, separate, separate individual thing uh collectively we're about to go on a couple little things uh, a couple little projects kind of just uh create create as we go and shit so and uh got some uh got some new graphics coming out soon oh so sick we drop into um uh everybody's got graphics coming out soon for the whole squad so everybody's gonna have different you know collective segments and probably just combine them all into one and make a whole uh, overall layout that's what it is these days we stitch things <laughs> yeah yeah well, I'm a big fan of my boy Grayson, man. He's yeah. he's so fucking gnarly. Sometimes he, you just see him, like, when he turns it on, you're just like, damn, look out. Yeah, out of nowhere, too. It's like one of those dudes, like, he'll just show up, and you're like, did, did, you, did you just wake the fuck up? Because you just, like, and how are you doing fucking, like, five foot, ten foot, fucking one foot frontside airs on this shit right now? Off to, like, you didn't even step foot on your board, and you're already cracking them off. Like, how? How? And then, I mean, he's multi-talented too and shit, dude. That whole fucking family, damn. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're royalty, especially in surfing. And like Nathan, oh. his, his dad was one of the, I think, uh, what's his name? Uh, his, the grandpa is like one of the first people to ever skate a pool. Wow. Yeah. That's you know? his history and shit. It's bound to, it was destined to be greatness over here and shit. <laughs> and, and if you're not following D Dibby Fletcher on Instagram, you're sleeping because her shit is epic. She's yeah. always dropping the craziest shit. Um, I want to kind of end if you're down. I want to kind of talk about like black history and skateboarding and like what you've seen kind of like and where we've come and what we got to do as far as like 
I, I know we got some ways to go, but we've come some ways too. like acknowledging that, but like also kind of just like what your thoughts on all of it is. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> especially that progression with, uh, you know, in, in our space and skateboarding and shit, you know, uh, uh, the minorities of a lot of things and shit, you know, and obviously we're all minorities. We're all, we're all outcasts, you know, and that's why we all, you know, click up so well, cause we all can relate. It doesn't matter really, you know, color agenda and a lot of things, you know, we could separate most of that shit, you know, uh, and along the lines, there's a trickle of things that obviously, you know, seep out and shit and, uh, within and, 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 and around, you know, so, uh, it's definitely come a long way, you know, in a lot of a lot of spaces and a lot of areas in the world today, you know, uh, especially in skateboarding because it was such a small little circle and group, you know, and there was the, there was only so many of us to you know progress and actually expand, you know, and do you know great things and shit, you know. So uh, it's definitely opened up a lot more, you know, especially for the people that have actually laid, you know, the blueprint and you know the Ron Allens, the you know the Stevies, and for myself to you know come along and have a space, yeah, and progress and you know be looked at as not less than just by you know based off color of skin or you know mentality and shit. So it's definitely definitely grown a lot and it's progressed a lot which is good to see you know i like I like things to be you know fucking diverse you know that's why like a lot of things that made things special were diversity and shit within this you know there's trickles of it but i feel like it, it could be more diverse of spreading certain levels of everything you know so uh, i feel like when i was on osiris we had a lot of diverse people of like you know we had this type of group we had this type of, and it was all meshed into one and it was a collective and it, it made it such a powerhouse of like yeah, look at how many like the, you know people that are brought together and shit, dude. And that's the greatest thing about skateboarding. No matter yeah. what the fuck we do and uh, what we say, because we some fools can say the most outrageous shit, but some people overlook that shit and escape. There's so many heads that have come along and have the, their opinions and two cents about certain people and shit, but you know that they, they learn from certain things like that. They you know think and be so and especially the older generation too is different now so i feel like it's a lot more accepted you know banding together and becoming one with all of us and shit so it has progressed a lot and it's definitely something to see and it's great to see a lot of people be in positions that have more shine and have more light on a lot of things and and not be judged so much and shit because you know there's times that you know i was gotten told some things that i'm like I would never think this would even be in this space in a million years or being told how to look, how to be, be this or watered down and shit. And I'm like, damn, how am I, how, how are you going to tell me to water down and shit? <laughs> uh, you're like, that's an insult in itself. But yeah, that's become a educational moment for a lot of people. But, you know, it's just educating, you know, the, the masses of certain things that may be because uh, a lot of things that, it would be overlooked and not be there. It's like that never happens, or it's the same as for everybody else. It is for it's it's not. It should be in certain cases. It's not, you know. And then you got to look through that to be like able to tell what's the difference and shit. But that, like I said, coming back coming down to personal experiences because not everybody has the same experiences as everybody else would throughout this whole thing. You know, some people got a smooth ride, being you know same as myself. And had to deal with nothing, you know, so they won't really understand too much of that. But for me, I'm like, you know, I've had to go through certain things that I'm like, uh, damn, okay. Like, I did not think it'd be like this. I don't think about it, but, you know, other people do. And people in positions, power in positions, you know, they look at things differently and shit. And they mm -hmm. see things the way they want to see things or they've experienced. And then they'll so sometimes push it onto you when that's not the narrative and shit. So, uh, and it's unfortunate, you know, that the way they see it, but you know, it's, it's all about educating and, you know, understanding and shit. And if you're willing to be open to understanding where certain people's perspectives is towards, you know, this issue, then you could probably see a clear vision of what they're, you know, trying to, you know, say and tell you and, uh, and, uh, you know, bring together because, you know, all, all in the end, we, we're just trying to be, yeah, we're just trying to be, we're just trying to live and we're just trying to have fun. We're just trying to do what we do without all the extra stuff that just puts us in a fucked up place and a mindset and, and looks at a lot of things differently and which we shouldn't really eliminate a lot of things. But, um, 
but yeah, it's definitely progressed and it, I see a bright future for a lot of things, you know, a lot of people, a lot of brothers, a lot of, you know, everybody, you know, uh, all races and shit. So it's like uh, one big collective family coming together in such a fucking light and we're all outcasts in this game and shit. So we're like, yo, we can relate off that. Fuck all the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just, it's to me like, and it's hard because I mean, obviously I'm white. Here's my struggle is transparency versus authenticity like yeah. oh we're gonna do this because of this agenda instead of yeah. like no this comes from the heart like what kind of things to you are special that somebody like myself could do and you'd be like damn that was sick that schmitty did that or something you know what i mean for sure no i feel that you know obviously uh, yeah we we black every month we got we, we history we making history every month okay yeah for the most part yeah the narrative it's like uh it, obviously when it comes from a, a, a sincere like a genuine thing from certain things it's the, i think the only problem was of, like exploiting certain shit like that you know I, I you know i talk about i say with the companies and shit that they're just pertaining to a narrative of like oh we got to get on this bandwagon train but after that we don't give a fuck about it you know mm. what I mean? i've seen that a, a few times a few years ago when they kind of like it was a big thing and then it kind of cap like every company capitalized on it and it was like y'all don't really care and what, what you did where's your support for any of them and I'm like, I don't see none of them. I don't see half of them on there. I don't see this. Mm. And I'm like, dude, like, okay, like, it, you can still be genuine and still push it and still, you know, appreciate it. But it's like the follow up, you know, it's like carry that, keep that same energy, keep it going. You know what I mean? Keep that same respect, keep that same uh, authenticity, the, mm. you know, over, across the board, not just uh, a day come or a month come and shit, you know. And that was like, all right, like I said, that's what I'm like, dude, keep it diverse and shit, you know. If you, if you appreciate it so much, then maybe you should look into, you know, getting somebody that's diverse and, you know, mm -hmm. if they don't already and shit. Uh, on that part, I've seen people kind of exploit it on that, uh, on that agenda just to, For sure. to make it seem like, almost seem like it's a black business, a support a black business type shit. And you're like, mm -hmm. wait, 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 wait. You, I know y'all don't care, dude. Like, <laughs> no, for a fact, because I know certain things about certain shit that I'm like, and I'm like, oh, that was good because I know they have heads that they support heavily and they do push and promote. That mm -hmm. makes sense, you know, and, and supporting certain movements and shit like that. So uh, that was one thing I'm like, oh, it's kind of like, mm, that's a little uh, chip right there. But if it comes from a space of like you genuinely, you know, respect, care, and you're, you're really authentic about it because you can really notice when people are pushing that and being like, yo, I appreciate it. Even if it is in the month of and shit, you know, it's like, yeah. Yo, Oh yeah, I'm posting, you know, Jovante like because his tray football was out of this world and shit. And leave it at that, not just like all oh, this black dude, like not paraphrasing it of being like that and shit. Because we all are just pushing for the same thing of being equal in this this society, in this world, in this country we're in and shit. Mm. And being less than is more or less, you know, and having not the same equal things across the board of like, oh, like getting things like like how they put like white privilege and all this shit. And like, yo, know, there's a levels to that of uh, where you could take certain things and be like, it might not be their fault particularly, but that's just the way they are perceived and shit. You know, you might not be like, yo, you're not that dude, but you could be put in that category just by the fact that that's exactly how it is. Because unfortunately that's just the history of it and shit. So uh, until we break that and kind of, you know, spread that more around, then we can all kind of be like, oh, we're all, on the same page accepted and we're all respected and shit dude and it's like we don't have that it's like it's like the same thing like father's day one day i'm a father every day now yeah like, that's what i'm saying about. <laughs> yeah. you gotta start somewhere yeah love on their and i don't know how much influence i have on anyone maybe they're like do everything the opposite of that guy but like right. <laughs> i just i'm like hey i'd rather do than talk like i yeah. i don't really like like dude i love you i love you bro well when was the last time you called me oh yeah. but dude i love you and you're like no we don't even talk i know no. right yeah that's what i'm so, saying like, i want to do shit possible. that like people can see and be like huh if i understand certain things but i'm trying to better understand and educate where the perspective is coming from when he says this or that in that situation even if i'm like why or like really but then you you're like oh let me ask 
And then, oh, okay, I understand that now coming from your perspective of, oh, okay, that really is, it puts me to think, okay, that that really is like that and shit. Cause it's like, I'm oblivious. It, it, it couldn't be like that and shit, but it really can. And that's exactly how it is. But mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't understand that unless I opened myself up to be, you know, better understanding what he was coming from or saying. You can't really fault nobody for really understanding because that's the part of educational purposes too. Because if you didn't know that or didn't see that as a perspective, then you would never know that. And then if it was to happen anywhere else or to someone else, you were like, oh, I know exactly how that that was and felt towards him and how he took it and shit. So, and that's reality of it and shit so uh but yeah the bigger picture and shit so that's why i'm like always keep it consistent don't leave anything out too it's like if you're gonna include if you're gonna put parts and things like that put you know accurate timelines and things that like oh people before this dude was that dude people before that dude was this dude it's like the the whole scope of everything i feel like some people do get excluded from it that Mm. are so like have pushed it and uh, involved and I'm like just because they're not to say relevant or whatever nowadays or this that doesn't mean their shit wasn't nothing or they didn't push uh, uh, to a certain level of nobody else could have got to or the people that are here now wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for you know certain key players and shit and you're like damn like these need to be included and shit and Mm. some of the things I do see what I was saying of like being excluded and i'm like that's not the full picture like you're you're missing missing things that are that make these people or this thing happen and you're like but that was the pivotal moment you got to include these include this in history like i said it's history include mm. the whole history <laughs> yeah no 100 percent. and communicating is so key and like I, I always, you know, these conversations, sometimes they're, they're very difficult to have, but like if we can have them in a way that's not so, the country's become so divisive with politics and everything. And if we can have a conversation where it's like, look, dude, I ain't trying to offend. I'm trying to learn and I'm putting my pride aside and we can disagree, but we can talk about it. And we yeah. can maybe have a perspective that we didn't have before. So it's like, dude, I didn't even look at it like that. And now I can see what you're saying or whatever it is. It might not change your mind, but you might look at it differently and then have a different reaction to all kinds of things. And slowly, I always tell my wife, I'm like, I'm the John Lennon, man. I got a dream that we're all going to just live in harmony. <laughs> like, you're planting them seeds. You got to plant them seeds and let them grow. And yeah, shit. exactly. Like, if you don't plant them seeds, then they're not able to have growth and shit. So and it's like, it may take time. It may take, you know, however long. But to the point, well, you could see a clearer vision by just having that implemented in your head already. That mm-hmm. wasn't there. Or it'll probably open you up to a lot of things to have a different perspective of a lot of shit that you you had prior to what you do now and shit. So uh, I take that, you know, and I'm fucking, you know, I see that clearly and shit. And I, I believe in that, too, you know. So, uh, okay. yeah, I got to plant those seeds to, you know, let it fucking grow and spread itself and shit. And it'll find its way, you know, natural. <laughs> it's natural. It'll, it'll come about. <laughs> Organic. Yeah, exactly. Well, dude, I appreciate you so much. If we we're putting your playlist to use right now what are some of the what are some of your like two or three hits that you're fucking getting hyped on lately okay uh charles bradley the world is in flames all right or the world's flame yeah one of those titles but charles bradley the world is in flames uh fire money man and larry june larry june just played sody party yeah that shit was fire yeah interpreted or inter- yeah, one of those titles. And then I would have to say, shit, what was I just listening to? Uh, obviously, MF Doom, baby. <laughs> Dude, I was going to say MF Doom is forever. We just had an yeah. um, MF Doom day up here. Like my homie really? Alon, that's an artist at Thrasher, he did this mask and all these fucking cool art shit, and they did a whole – they do an annual MF Doom Day That's up dope. here. It's pretty That's, sick. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought that was rad and shit. I'm like, man, love that dude and all his music. He was fucking amazing. But yeah, that, that, I think that's top three. That, that's all MF Doom songs, too. That's not oh, yeah. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm down. Can we add one la one last question? It, it, first thing that comes to mind when you're asked what the gnarliest thing you saw someone do on a skateboard in person is? Shit. Okay. Damn. There's a lot, but one that definitely comes to mind. Fucking R.I.P. Homie. Shane Cross, Smith Grind, Twenty One Stairs. Fucking Ooh. first try. Fuck. Where at? <laughs> Uh, Mirlands, Mirlands High, the the rail before the the main rail. Everybody skates and shit. Uh, but yeah, he smoothed around that shit in person. It was, and he was young too, young cat and shit. You know, Shane and, was so good. Uh, yeah, that was fucked. I'm like, and that's dude, people weren't skating 18 stair rails like that. All right, so you know, when he came out of nowhere, it was like. Yo, this uh, this fucking Australian kid is fucking shit up, and he Smith grinded no problem. Like, how do you approach that? Like, I guess so. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, honestly, that that was random fucking thought. That definitely is right there. I'm like, pff. I back that. Hell yeah, flip at that time was so important. Like Roly yeah. Arto. Uh, Bulala, Shane, yeah. and the kids, David Gonzalez and Curran, they're like Louis Lopez, like five <laughs> little, little guys. Man, yeah, there's some was, gnarly man. skateboarding right there. Yeah. When PJ's, uh, oh, I think, yeah. was it really sorry or is it sorry? I forgot which one. I think, uh, really, really sorry. sorry. And that was with Louis and all those heads too in there too. They were little. Oh, yeah. Bastion and Apple Yard, yeah. like. Yeah. Pfft man those times those videos were something else and shit dude i swear they don't make videos like they used to there's still really good videos out there but i yeah. swear like the nostalgic classics ones that you're like i'm still watching this 10 years from now exactly yeah uh, dude it's fucking a, what a time what a time for skateboarding and shit dude love it fucking hell love yeah it. dude thank I you so it. much i fucking love you appreciate the time love and you. everything good catching up Hit yes. me up anytime if you're up this way, especially. Uh, I'm coming down there for uh, February 22nd is Hewitt's birthday, and they're going to do a big thing at Washington Street, and they're going to have a party at, I'm not sure, somewhere by Barrio Logan, and they're going to, like, we're going to make a video, like, 50 years of Hewitt, like, greatest hit skating and stuff. So maybe uh, if you're around, that'd be a good time to link up but uh i gotta go visit cranny and fucking all the old homies nice i saw him the other day too and shit so you know mm -hmm. yeah all the heads to blender and shit they jimmy out there. cow yep everybody's around we doing it we still living we still skating we here watch out now <laughs> well big love man if you're coming up this way or anything let's link up or whatever yeah sounds great man much love i appreciate you having me always hell man. yeah Doing it, talking Schmidt. Talk <laughs> Schmidt. You <laughs> take care of yourself. My man, you too. Peace, Peace out. out. Yeah. yeah. You. And now a word from our sponsor, Oro Coffee. Mm. That's some damn good coffee. Order one or six bags at orocoffeeroasters.com. Y'all like music? Because you're listening to SMFM. Hello, hello, thank you. Hello, hello, good people. Thank you for sticking around for episode two of SMFM, where today I'm going to play for you Good As Gone from Vancouver, British Columbia, with their song Blue Collar Blues. <laughs>
good as gone. From Vancouver, British Columbia. Find them on Instagram at good as gone band. Love one another. See you next week for the hottest in underground music at SMFM. Your spot for new music. Peace. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout-out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.